Now the next thing it's going to do is it's going to come back and say, here is my server setup, and here are the various details associated with this data source. So everything looks fine to me. One thing that I encourage you to do is test the data source. So if you go ahead and click on test, it goes ahead and run some connectivity tests, it establishes a connection, it makes sure that you can disconnect, and if it can it can do all of those things, it will come back and say tests completed successfully. This is kind of an important step and a step that some folks tend to overlook. If your ODBC data source is not set up properly and you will get a an error at this particular point, but in my case everything is fine, so we'll go ahead and move on. So I'll go ahead and accept this by saying OK. All of that's set up, everything is good, and again, I'll go ahead and finish this out by saying OK, and I'll close the administrative tools window down as well. So that gets us just halfway there. Now, one of the things that's important is, is that this ODBC interface that I just created is, is created basically at the machine level, and any um, application that has a, the appropriate authorities and has the ability to look at that database can can open it up and use that ODBC data source that I just created. Now one of the things that I'm going to do next is show you how you can set up the ODBC the interface for uh, COBOL. Now this is a little this part's a little bit tricky. In order to do this you have to create what is called an INF file. The INF file is created by a utility program that, that gets shipped along with Fujitsu NetCobol for .NET. A little bit tricky to find uh, if you don't know where you're you're going or what you're looking for. The program it's actually an executable program and it's actually uh, installed automatically into the program files, common files, Fujitsu Net Cobol for .NET runtime utilities subdirectory. So if I go ahead and and look at this again, you'll see uh, that it is right here. So common files, Fujitsu Net Cobol for .NET runtime and there I've got debugger, documentation, patch, runtime, and then utilities. And of course the name of the program itself is F5FH, F5, oops, 5FH, SQL, and you can see it's right here. So again, if I just click on that, it brings up this little utility program. Now in the interest of, of saving a little time, uh, I'm going to show you a, a nifty little way uh, to kind of deal with that. Uh, you could do it like this or you could basically go ahead and sort all of this out and and come down here and identify the program uh, F5 FH SQL and if you right mouse click on it uh, you can create a shortcut for this and you could put this particular program on your desktop. In my case I already have a shortcut cut, as you can see so I'll just get rid of that so that I can actually show you how to create this shortcut so I'll delete the shortcut there and what I'll do is I'll highlight this program and I'll right mouse click and then just sort of drag it onto my desktop like so and let up on the right mouse click and then just say create sort shortcut here. So uh, now I can go ahead and execute that program and again you can see the program comes up and all is fine. Now I'm going to go ahead and close this window and we'll go ahead and start dealing with um, building up what we call the INF file. Now before we go any farther I want to talk a little bit about getting help for this because as you can see the interface is a little bit basic. Well okay it's a lot basic and um, this particular utility has a few idiosyncrasies and, and I want you to make sure that it's, it's easy to get around and there's a couple of little tricks that I use in order to make this happen easily. So I just first off I'm going to decide where I want to put this INF file. So the first thing I do is I locate the subdirectory that I want. In this case, it's going to be samples, ODBC sample, and I've got the, the location of this right here. Again, I can just go ahead and copy this, right mouse click and copy, and then I'll just go ahead and minimize this. Now, I have that, that address already in my clipboard, so what I can do is I can put that right here. Now, but before I do that, I want to go ahead and uh, click on help here because there is help for this particular utility. There is a file that is called the netcobol for .NET version 3.1 user's guide that ships with the product. And if you come down here to working with the setting and executing SQL information using the ODBC information file, that's what you're looking for. So we're going to go ahead and create that. Here's the utility, so it'll actually tell you where to, to go ahead and, and execute the utility from. 
and it will tell you how the utility is, is used. Again, I point you to that. You can go ahead and, and explore the details of that on your own. Now, what I'll do is go ahead and start working with this myself. So I'll come in here and I will paste. So right mouse click and paste. And now I'm going to go ahead and give it a backslash and go ahead and, and give this a name. So I'll call this default.inf. So simple and easy. And actually, it would help if I spelled default correctly. And this is, again, one of those instances where you have to be pretty careful about how you're spelling things. So I'll go ahead and say OK. And it says, file not found. Create new file. Let's do that. So I've created a new file. Now I have my server name. I have all of the uh, information about the default connection information and my connection scope. So as you go through this, and I'm going to kind of change this around a little bit so you can kind of follow along in the documentation as I go through this. Um, you can see all of the uh, values that need to be put in here. So here is my server information. So I can go ahead and put all of that in here. And I'll call, go ahead and call this uh, default. I'm going to keep all the names the same again because I'm trying to keep things as, as simple as I, I can keep them. And again, I can put this in here. I can go ahead and I'll just go ahead and call this. Uh, let's see, what did I call this now? Let's go back in here. Again, I want to show you if you forget where to go find all of this information. So I'll go back into administrative tools and my ODBC data sources. And again, if I come up here to system DSN, keep in mind it has to be default. That's the one that I created. So I'm going to come back here to default. I'm just going to go ahead and specify, specify that. Now, one of the things about this particular uh, technology is, is that it's, if you don't put in a user ID and password, it's probably not going to work right. So I'll go ahead and put in a user ID and password, even though my particular database does not require it. And then, of course, I can put in a comment here if I require one. Now, this is particular uh, area where I want you to pay some attention to, this access mode and commit mode. Uh, access mode is read-only or access mode is read-write. If you're going to do any kind of inserts to the database, which we are, you need to change that to read-write. If you have it as read-only, I trust me when I tell you that, that inserting uh, records into a database will not work. The next thing I think is really important is uh, commit mode. Now, um, over a period of time, I've had customers that have had, had some real performance difficulties with their inserts and work with large databases. And believe me when I tell you that changing uh, from auto commit mode to manual commit mode makes a world of difference. Uh, with auto commit is also a, a level of safety associated uh, with uh, your, your process there. If you set specify auto, you cannot back out any of the changes that you've made to the database. If you say manual commit mode, then you have the ability to, to essentially back all of those out or undo those, those changes until you commit actually perform a commit on your database. So my recommendation to you is always on commit mode, make the commit mode manual. Please do that. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and say apply those. I'm going to go ahead to the default connection information and again I'll pick up the server name and I'll say apply there. And I know that this seems like it's a bit redundant but uh, trust me when I tell you that you need to do this in order to make this thing work properly. So um, a little, this is a little bit of a cumbersome utility, but it's, it's very necessary. So uh, let's go to the connection scope. And again, here on the connection scope, and this, this one bears a little bit of explanation uh, because there's, there's some detail in the help file that um, I think is important for you to, to uh, look at. Again, um, if you go down, down here and see, um, let's see, get down here just a little bit farther. All right. So, uh, in the ODBC information connection scope, you see the application domain, the thread, and the object instances. And again, you can see what thread is. It's a connection that can be used in a specific run unit or thread. An object instance is for a specific object. And of course, the application domain is for the entire application. I'm going to go ahead and set mine to application domain. And again, what I've kind of wanted to do is to show you where all of this is located in the help. Uh, the purpose of this whole exercise is to make you as as self-sufficient as you can possibly be and expose you to as much information as I can possibly expose you to. So again, we'll go ahead and say OK at this particular point. And I've gone through and created my ODBC INF file here.